This is Galatry Season 2 Snapshot. January 25th, 2017. This is the video diary of Quade Slater, Ghost Town Investigator. Me and my mate Skippy have been left marooned in this mysterious central England town that is Gallatry. Even the last inhabitant has now disappeared. All the denizens seem to have been involved in a mass exodus. How is not known. To where is not known. Why is not known. I, Quade Slater, am here to find some answers. I'm not sure what we're looking for, truth be known, mate. But we're sure as Dingo Nat's not going to find it sitting down there in the radio station. Let's head down towards the river. We haven't looked down there yet. I hope that Christmas jumper's keeping you warm. I hope so, because you look stupid. Not ironic, mate. Stop moaning, will ya? If it gives you a static shock, just take it off, mate. What? You want to take it back to the store and exchange it for another one, free of charge? Hmm. Skippy, you're a kangaroo, right? But do you know what a kangaroo is? No? It's a Geordie stuck in a lift. Two can play being the comedian, mate. Well, here we are, mate. Here's the river. Struth is even more derelict down here than the rest of this broken gravestone town. Perhaps it looked like this before the exodus. Where are we? What does that sign say, mate? Friday Street, leading to Craven. Where's that, mate? Let's have a look up here. Well, it just looks like a lone warehouse to me. Hang on, what's that blue flickering light coming from the upper window? Perhaps there is someone else here, after all. <laughs> Struth, mate, be careful, will you? You're about to scare me to death there. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Whoa! What have we got here? Well, that's the source of the light, anyway. Photo plastic on. Well, it looks like a Kaiser panorama to me. I know you like bananas, mate, but it's a Victorian picture viewer, a precursor to cinema. There's one in Swan Hill in Victoria, back home. You know, the old pioneer town, remember? Well, let's have a look-see. Just look through the viewing goggles and shall we see what we've got here? It looks like a photo roll call of everyone who's ever lived here. Like some mechanical half-assed Facebook. You're right, mate. Forever and ever and ever. I guess this is what the few survivors after the apocalypse or even the alien explorers will see if we ever push the button and destroy the world. The remnants of billions of facile, futile, Facebook lives splurge like a poor Max Senna spread for the future world to see. The future of humankind. What a sick obituary. A huge dingo's doo-doo in place of the flowers on the grave of hope. The selfie of anti-Renaissance modern age. I love you too, Skip. Now let's watch. We may learn what the hell happened here. Buenos dias. What do you want? I guess you want a haircut, see? I am Miguel. Well, I was just going out for lunch. But as I only have enough for the Gregs from the dumpster, it cannot wait. Take a seat, senor. I will just move the piles cushion out of the way there. What the? What? If you were blessed with the children in the grapes weigh 20 stone, you'd want some comfort too, senor. 
It's bad enough to be so alone staring at this fat Spanish face in the mirror all day without suffering the slings and arrows of ass rages fortune in the gullies department as well. I can tell you, it's a more common than you think of. So how do you want? Kim Jong-un? Pull a weller, flock of seagulls. Well, I am. Um... Sure, the back and sides are good. I don't know how to do the others anyway, senor. Everyone wants a shorter back of sides around here anyway. No cojones, not here in Gallatry. So, planning to go on holiday this year, senor? Anyway, nice. Well, I am. Um... Well, good for you. Last time I went away, I got a dirty cheap Airbnb deal in Turkey. They told me it was a simple village that overlooked the sea. They didn't also tell me that they also overlooked the hygiene, or working electrical, the running water either. Anyway, it was the second day that he got busted in a drugs raid. I spent a two weeks in a Turkish prison until they finally let me go. Still, I lost two a stone and kind of also knife fight super duper. It's more common than you think of. What a kind of work you in, senor. Well, I am. Um... I was never always a barber, you know. I used to work in factory. But I had to leave on account of my principles, you see? When I didn't agree with all the product testing on the do on animals. No! Drugs, makeup and shampoo, okay. But I worked in a hammer factory. I say enough, but... So I took it a course. I say how hard can cutting hair be? You married, senor? Well, I'm... Um... My wife is a dead from collective noun disease. See, senor, it's a more common than you think. I learned a lot about it. I learned that a group of sharks is called a shiva. I learned that a group of flamingos is called flamboyance. I learned that a group of a buffalo is called abstinence. I also learned that my wife threesome with my best friend and my father is called a quicker drink after work with the girls. You want me to use the razor, senor? Where you go, senor? You want to change, no? You want to look at your back of your head in the mirror, no? Ah, senor. What a sucker. That's the way to get tips around here. Right. Heads or tails? Hmm. Good. Right, here's another one. As we come in, mein Herr, please be taking a seat here. So what do you want? The Hitler schnitten? The Phil Oakey from the Human League schnitten? Donald Trump schnitten? Nein. Well, I... Schotten back inside. Sehr gut, sehr gut. So, what is your policy on beating up Thai lady boy prostitute? Well... When I get accused of being decadent and aggressive, I attack them with a peacock. That's my policy. It's more common than you think. Uh, uh, who's there? I'm not scared of you, you know. You've made your point. Now, let me go. I don't think you're in a position to make demands, mate. So then, Mr. Brown, mate. What are we going to do with you? Let me go. You'll regret this. I'll go to the police. You'll be in for it then. For it? For it? There are no police here. Or shall I check? Hello? Chief Anderson? 5 Hello? Hello? Woo! 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 No. Nothing. Just you and me now, Brownie. So tell me, what did you dream about here, Brownie? Did you wake suddenly in panic, wondering where you are, and smell the sweet fragrance of jasmine off the Bosphorus? Did you think you were in Istanbul? Did you wake up in the middle lane of the M1 in your Mercedes, wondering whether you can drive or not? Well, what do you dream about? Holidays? Retirement? A swimming pool? A Maserati? World chuffing peace? Well, Mr Brown? I don't know. I kind of forgot my dreams from when I was a boy. I don't know. Scoring the winning goal in the FA Cup final. Winning the lottery. Happy life. I don't know. Jimmy Dove? Jimmy Dove? Jimmy Dove? Ha! That's where you went wrong, my friend. That's why you woke up nailed to this warehouse floor. I bet you grew up. I bet it's not what you dreamt of when you graduated. I bet it was not what you dreamt of when you got married. I bet it was not what you dreamt of when you got your first mortgage. I bet it wasn't what you dreamt of when you walked past me every day, sat on the sidewalk on Market Street asking for spare change. Was it, Mr. Browning, eh, mate? It was you, wrapped up in that sleeping bag. Asking if I had any spare change? Yes, me and others like me. Sleeping bags, sleeping rough, sleeping public, sleepwalking past their own dreams and others' misery. Do you know what I dreamt about, Brownie, mate? Mm, no. Oh, oh, please let me go. I can give you your money. 
I'll help you get back on your feet. Just let me go. Please, mister. I don't even know your name. Your money? No. I didn't dream about that, Brownie, mate. My name doesn't really matter now, mate. Anyway, it's shammy. This is what I dreamt about. I dreamt I was lying on a battlefield in Afghanistan in 1879, mate. I'd been hit. Sharp pain in my shoulder. I looked down and touched my tunic. Wet. I passed out. Flat on my back, looking up the sun on the foreign field. Then darkness. Then I awake, lying flat on my back, nailed to the floor, just like you are now. There are Afghan tribesmen walking along the line. I look either side. There are many of us, Sikhs, English, Welsh, Scottish, all nailed to the floor, all thinking, what does Jimmy Dove mean? And then, the Pathan tribesman grabs my head, puts a knife to my throat. I instinctively lie still. He jams a piece of wood in my mouth. I can't close my mouth. The hot air starts to burn my throat. I hear the others in the line scream and moan as they are dealt with in the same way. Then I just hear moaning, mate. Then what? Um, shall we? We see the path and women come out. They begin at the start of the line on my right. I turn and see the women dressed in black crouch over the first soldier in the line. What happened? What did the Pathan woman do? The worst thing imaginable. They crouched over the soldiers and pissed into their mounds, mate, one by one, until they drowned under that Afghan sun. Infidel death. Anyway, then I woke up. What did you dream of again, Brownie, mate? Jimmy Dove? Well, this is the truth of your dream. Now let's get this bit of wood in your mouth, shall we? Now, now, Brownie, don't struggle. This is what you dreamt of. You will soon be free. You will soon be Jimmy Dove. We are all Jimmy Dove. Never forget who we are. Don't remember who you ever were. <laughs> Welcome, little children. Former Harmonious Crew, and that Mr. VP can solve you. Everything I do, comrades, is for Ice Cream. Come and get a 99 from Mr. Paul Pot VP. How are little girl? What would you like from Mr. VP? A 99? Very good choice. Khmer Rouge sauce? Very, very good, comrade. That would be a quids. Would you also care for a single cigarette? Only a quids. Very good. Next! Oh, all little boy, what can Mr. VP get you? A magnum, eh? A big bourgeois there, comrade. There you go. That would be a quids, comrade. As you are obviously a man of choice, how about a couple of pages ripped out of Asian babes? Only a quid? No? Ah, I see, comrade. You're actually a party member with pretensions of the middle class. So a couple of pages ripped out of estate benefit slags weekly it is then. Only a quid. Next. How old, fatty boy? You are a chunky chappy, aren't you? What can Mr. VP get you, what? An American Sunday from my van, the People's Democratic Revolutionary Party of Cambodia and the Central Communist Party of Galatry didn't fight the evil imperialist for this. No wonder you're so fat, imperialist, getting gut bucket on the blood of the proletariat. Stop crying, imperialist dog, and get lost before I send you to the killing fields where you will die slowly with a cornetto up your nose. Okay, VP. Right, another day, another imperialist doa. Time for Mr. VP to have a drink after work. Right, next up, uh, Pol Pot. Is there a Pol Pot there? Pol Pot here, a Pol Pot there. Here a Pol, there a Pol, everywhere a Pol Pot. Alright, settle down you lot. Come on, Pol. Let's be having ya. Oh, well, is this thing on? Damn. I know the end is near. I'm so afraid the final curtain. Come back. I stay at clear, I stick my case, I'm rich and certain. Hello oh, honey, I'm home. Open up! Come on darling, open the door. Is Mr. VP home for back? Open the door, stupid imperialist bitch. Wait until I get my hands on you. Stupid cow. Looks like Mr. VP will have to sleep in the van again. And the DJ, and the DJ, and the DJ. Right, just move around some boxes and make a nice pillow out of wafer. Whoa! 
Excuse me, sir, would you like a free sample of cake? Oh, who, me? Oh, yes, come on then. I've always got time for a free cake. Come in, come in. Welcome to Coombs the Bakers, where our motto is, we get off on baking. We are home to the famous cream twist. I'm Mrs. Coombs. I often take folks in with free samples on Fridays. It's good to drum up some new business, even for an established shop like mine. We've been here for three generations, you know. Over 100 years of blood, sweat and flour, as we bakers say. Oh, really? I've never noticed this shop before. I must have walked past it every day on the way to work. Well, you certainly have a wide range of very tasty-looking cakes. Could I try a cream twist, if that's your signature cake? A very wise choice, sir. There you go. Mm. Oh, that's exquisite. Very creamy. Also, magically so. Mm. There's a savoury hint as well. Is that cinnamon? I told you would get off on baking. You are a man of taste. I will let you into a little secret. Actually, well, it tastes great. Could I have the recipe? It was handed down to me by my mother, and to her from her mother. It is a coon secret. I cannot divulge it to anyone. But I will tell you how I adapted the recipe to give it this distinct and very 21st century flavour. Even us bakers need to modernise sometimes. Oh yes, that would be interesting. Please go on, Mrs Coons. Well, when I first started in the bakery as a girl, my mother taught me the secret of the cream twist. I must have been seven years old or so, and was the eldest of seven siblings, but the only girl. Us Coonses are a matriarchal clan of bakers, and it falls to the eldest girl to keep the secret safe and pass it down. I married young at 18 and was very happy with Mr. Coombs. We had seven children, and fortunately all boys. Mr. Coombs died in a car accident, and as the boys grew up, they all left the nest. They had no interest in baking. There was no love, no passion. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Having a child a year for seven consecutive years is very important for the Coombs family. Very important for the famous cream twist recipe. Hmm, important? Yes. So I had a quandary. You see, the intense creamy taste comes from the mother's milk, a mother's love. But after Mr. Coombs died, I became barren and still had not yet fulfilled my family obligation to provide a daughter. So I had to adapt the recipe a bit. So you added anchovy? Sort of. I used cow's milk and substituted the mother's love with something else to get a unique flavour. You see, I'm a squirter, so by holding the mixer close to me in the kitchen, I can add something of myself to the twists. I really get off on baking. You can taste me, can't you? That's the famous Gallatry cream twist. There it is. Do you need a napkin, sir? Right then, Aardvark. Let's get on with this casting session, shall we? What's up? Okay, Max. We've been getting complaints about the sameness of the characters. We need some new blood. Sameness? Well, who are we going to get to play the part of Indy, then? I was thinking Kevin Bacon. I think Ford's too old now. Well, what about this guy? His CV's printed on uh, Vallon. Smells, well, thespian. What's his name? Keith. That's it. OK, well, let's get him in for an audition. Hmm, what about Mayor Bugles? Got any candidates for that? There's this guy. Went to RADA. His name's Compton Biggleswade. He even sent us a picture. Look, he's wearing a cravat. Let's see. Mmm, classy. Should we get him in too? We need more cravats in this radio show. A show without a cravat is like an egg without salt. Welcome, um, Keith. We like your CV. We're looking for someone with the versatility of Kevin Bacon. You know, pain, anger, fear, lust. What can you do? Um, streaky smoked sandwich and, well, cell phone adverts. Would it help if I changed my name to Bacon? You're, You're in. in. Next. Come on, Compton. Take a seat. 
Tell us about yourself before we start. Greetings, gentlemen. I am Compton Biggleswade, the Compton Biggleswade, the toast of the RSC. My Richard III in 82 is still mentioned in hushed, reverent tones, even today. Blimey, that must be some Richard III. Did you just take a photo of it? In a cravat, perhaps. <clears throat> so, shall we make a start, Compton? We need a character that exudes authority, a regal heir, if you will. The script requires the character of Bugles to win an election in New Jersey as a rank outsider based upon an anti-corruption ticket. I guess it's a bit like Henry Fonda's character in Twelve Angry Men. Right, let's take it from the hustings on page 12. Now, in your own time, Compton. <laughs> You certainly know how to bring a character to life, Compton. What do you reckon, Aardvark? Hmm. A couple of script changes would be required. Not sure. After the downtown Abbey fiasco, I'll work for BR. You're, You're in. in! That should shut up the moaning minis. Sameness my ass. Too right. I won't be criticised. For what? Won't be criticised for what? No. That's it. I won't be criticised. Hmm. Fair enough. Want another pint? <laughs> Quite tonight, eh, Chasseur? Haven't been sitting out in the patrol car as quiet as this for a while now, eh? Eh, Chasseur? Sorry, sir. I was listening to this new podcast by a guy called Keith Bacon. It's pretty good. What's it about, eh? I'm not quite sure yet. Seems to be mainly about sandwiches so far, sir. But the reviews have said it's got pain, anger, fear, lust and some underground monsters. Sounds good. Who the hell is casting for these things? I wouldn't be surprised if Nicolas Cage gets cast in art. Well, I don't know. The remake of The Wicker Man at this rate. I know what you mean, sir. Or Slice the Lone in Richard III. Wouldn't that be called Richard III? The Return of the King, and this time it's car park related. Right, let's go, Chasseur. There's a suspicious vehicle on Blackbird Terrace. Hit the noise and let's go. Right, here we are, Sergeant, up there on the left. Look, it must be that ice cream van skewed halfway across the pavement. Look, suspicious. Shall I bring the taser? What's a tay? No, the taser, sir. I heard you the first time. Stop mucking about and let's go and look at this blooming van. Sir, sir, there's some guy lying on the floor of the van. Is he alive, Chasseur? sir? No, sir. He seems to be covered in hundreds and thousands, sir. Do you think he topped himself, Chasseur? No, sir. Looks like an accident. There's claret everywhere. Looks like he hit his head on the Mr. Whippy pump when he fell, sir. Hang on, let me have a look. This isn't blood, Chasseur. It's raspberry sauce. And look, there's a flake shoved down his throat. You're not thinking what I'm thinking, are you, sir? Yes, Chasseur. He's been 99 Let's get some idea on our John Doe and get forensic up here and quick. Do you think it's the work of the Iceman again, sir? Could be, but I want to get the lab boys up here before those chalk ices melt. You know how they like a chalk ice. Anyway, I do need to charge the suspect, Sergeant. Charge, sir? How? He's dead, sir. Well, being dead is no excuse for blatantly parking on a plunking lane like this. Chalk ice or no chalk ice. You know Prentice's stance on this sort of antisocial behaviour. He will have to go and get punished like the rest of them. Mr Bridger will be pleased. Another recruit for his podcast rehabilitation course for offenders. Fancy an ice pot, Sergeant? Mr. Stretch, sir, begging your pardon, sir. Would you like anything to eat? No, Mrs. Piddle, thank you. I'm just working on these cursed memoirs that Munchin has been needling me to start. I never knew that writing the adventures of Stretch on Munchin would be so difficult, Mrs. Piddle. Considering I was there during said adventures, it's harder than one would wager to get it well to sound natural. Why don't you read me some, sir? It might help you to see where you're going wrong. Mm, very well. It was in the year of our Lord, 1887, on June the 17th day, when we first heard the dreaded name of Shibboleth the Strangler. I got up. And then what, Mr. Stretch? Well, that's it. I can't remember much else. Botheration, this memoir writing is such a vexatious conundrum. 
I wonder who that is. Shall I go and wake Mr Munchin, sir? No, no, Mrs Piddle. Let him sleep off his labours from last night. If it's a case, I will conduct the initial interview. Perhaps it will help with my writing. Go get the door, Mrs Piddle. Get the door. Mr Stretch, this is Mrs Pickard and a lady servant, Miss Show Me. Welcome, ladies. Please take a sheet. How can we be of service? Hang on, let me find my pencil. There we go. Firstly, your names, please. Je suis Annie Picard, but since the unfortunate death of my husband, I have reverted back to the maiden name of Annie Cart. This is my servant and confidant, Miss Donna Shumi. Um, uh, how are you spelling that? Uh, blast! I broke my pencil. Welcome, ladies. I am again arisen. Shall I rescue you from a pain worse than death that is Mr. Stretch's poor spelling, grammar and memory? <laughs> Ah, oh, Monchin, you're awake. This is Anne Picard. Annie Cart. And Donna Show Me. Hmm, ladies, you seek me out for help in the curious death of the master illusionist, Monsieur Picard. By Agile Monchin, how did you guess? <sighs> By your own admission, Mr. Stretch. Picard, Annie Cart, and Donna Show Me. Let it write itself, Stretch. Let it write itself. Now, ladies, what can we do to help? I'll wager that Monsieur Picard has reappeared from the dead like the proverbial rabbit out of the hat, so to speak. Struth, mate, did you see that? That was the fella that wrote the ripper book that we found in the library. No, not the one about bananas that he liked. The one about Jack the Ripper. The white chapel murders by Byron Munchin. That was Munchin in the photo plasticon. I'm sure it was. Hang on, it's moved on. Damn. This might be a great way of actually finding out what story I need to tell is. Perhaps I've got a second chance at solving the Ripper mystery after all, mate. If this guy, Munchin, was actually there in Whitechapel, perhaps we could find out the truth from this machine. What do you reckon? You're right, mate. We need to reverse the mechanism to get the Munchin bit back. Best try and avoid the rest of those weirdos, mind. This place has given me the heebie-jeebies. Right, Skip, if I give you a leg up, you reckon you could hop into that machine and see how it works? Right, mate. One, two, three. Matilda! You in yet? Can you see a motor for the mechanism, mate? Read the plate on the side of the motor, mate. What does it say? 12 volts DC. Excellent, mate. Right, all we need to do is swap the polarities of the cable over on the motor, and the mechanism should go in reverse. Right, I'm throwing over the screwdriver, mate. Got it? Come on, Skip, unscrew those cables. Don't worry, it's only 12 volts. Okay, now skip. Reattach the cables in reverse. You got that? Good work, skip. Now let's solve the Ripper mystery once and for all. Oh, now we are in the pyramid. You have been listening to Gallatry, a community-funded local radio station. I'm Adam Aardvark. Max couldn't be around at the end of the show. He often needs to lie down in a darkened room and sort of, well, convalesce. If you enjoyed today's show and want to know more or simply express a simple and not very cogent opinion, then email us at welcometogallatry at gmail.com. You can tell us what you think, although we might already know what you think. Or failing that, if you genuinely have no idea, we can helpfully provide some new ideas that you can call your very own. Ideas that you can share with your friends and family and become a much more interesting and likeable person, if only to yourself. This has been a Gallatry Entertainment broadcast recorded in a haunted pub in Gallatry. No, honestly, voices appeared on the recordings that we later had to edit out. I think we got them all, but who's to know for sure? Anyway, Gallatry is performed by Max Black, written and recorded by Max Black and Adam Ardberg, is copyright Gallatry Productions 2016. Thanks for listening. But remember, on your next journey home, Gallatry may be just around the corner.
coming soon. Good work, Skip. Now let's solve the Ripper mystery once and for all. Elementary, my dear Stretch. Elementary. <laughs>